Uh, we're talking about process because that's what Ben and Jake write a movie is all about. <laughs> so without further ado, welcome to our live stream, Derek Kolstad. There yes. he is, the man, <laughs> the legend. I was going to say, yeah. tired and unshaven. It's all good. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, this Out is of bed. a casual podcast, okay? Out of bed and dressed. <laughs> I don't know if it feels that way. The pillow in front of me just going, hmm. Dude, I got my <laughs> cup of coffee. I didn't shave this morning. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. So thank you so much for coming on and being with us this morning. Thank you, man. Um, not sure how much you know about what we've been doing with this podcast, but um, basically... Jake and I are, are being crazy and we're writing a spec live on this thing. Um, so we do- <laughs> Look at the face, he was like- right? I was gonna say, that's not a smart move, but ha ha good job. Well, good job. Either, <laughs> either, either, either it's gonna be an amazing script or we are gonna crash and burn like nobody's business and totally. that'll be entertaining too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we just felt that it would be interesting to, I think, especially emerging screenwriters who are like, what does it look like? Am I, am I doing it right? How do other people do it? What is right? All those things. And so the other week we had a great, we did our kind of first kind of bit kind of off the cuff interview with our friend yeah. Dave Matalon, who's got a movie coming out on um, Amazon. Uh, Amazon next year, yeah. Blumhouse movie. But we thought we also know you. Yeah. And, and really the purpose of this, I mean, the reason we invited people into our process um, is because we felt like no other podcasts really talk about like the actual process of writing, not like the technical rules or like, or even oh, the like business. what should a slug line yeah, look yeah, like yeah, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But like, what is it to come up with an idea and turn it into a screenplay? And so that's what we've been doing, and that's what we want to talk to yeah, you about. Because apparently you also write screenplays. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. And now produce prolific. And now produce stuff. Yes. You're muted. Something happened to your microphone. Oh, yes. You, got, you, you muted yourself somehow. There's a button. I'm sure there's a button. There's there a is. Button. You know what? I might be able to unmute. I, I un, can I unmute you? Nope, I can't unmute you. Wow. Down at the bottom of your screen in your little square there, there's a little thing with a microphone. Click that guy. Or alternatively, you could just answer our questions with the power of interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> we are having technical difficulties. This, again, this is live. Derek this has is happening live. And now he's live. gone. My intro scared him to death. He was death. just like, I don't want to do this. I want to speak to you. Because... These guys tricked me into coming. I yeah, they said it was going to be a nice, warm environment. And now they're just. Yes. Yeah. Something yeah. Something has happened, but we are back. All right, here he is. Here he is. There, there he is. Go. There we go. I don't know how these died and then everyone, everything yeah, else. Yeah, that's, and that, that's that'll that. do it. That'll uh, do it. Be, um, I mean, like, yeah. I've been wanting to do this since I was really young. You know, I, I, I read a shit ton when I was a kid and uh, I love movies. And uh, as a child of the 80s, I wasn't into TV that much because outside of the stuff that you caught in syndication, like Wild Wild West and, you know, um, and, and whatnot, I preferred film. And what was fun is at the time, late at night, we didn't have cable, but TBS would show uncut um, movies from the 60s and 70s uh, late. And so you'd, you'd go down to the basement or whatever and, and see your mom and dad's movies or your grandpa's movies, which was, which was a ton of fun. And um, ultimately I was a consumer first. And, and at a certain point you're like, I want to do that. Right. Yeah. And then you write that first screenplay when you're 13 and you give it to mom and mom is brutal in her notes. Right. My mom was the same way. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, no, oh. oh. but you're encouraging still. And then oh. you go, later in life and you see her notes and you're like oh man i must be pretty right. pretty loved with me there right? yeah, like did uh, mom used to be a studio executive because these are really yeah. good right <laughs> uh, when you know you know everyone's process is, is different you know and yeah that's the other thing too is we've all read books and, and we've we've gone to various symposiums and gone down the rabbit hole of what is the best way and to be honest there isn't one that's you know and that's the thing right we all have our own process and that's yeah. kind of the fun of i think what we're trying to do with this podcast is just go everybody has their own process and maybe you'll take something from ours and go i like that maybe they'll take something from yours 
my first question for you is, and we've been asked the same thing over the podcast, is how do you come up with an idea? Do you have a specific way? Do you have, do you, do you, Take Where do ideas time. come from? Do, well, you know, Jake and I will actually take entire days and just go, let's just throw shit against the wall and maybe we'll find a good idea. And it's, then some, it's, you know. it's, it's no different than that, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'd say for me, um, you know, in the digital age, it's hard to get away from noise. And so a lot of times it's turn off the phone, go for long walks, and just start thinking about the stories I love and my, you know, looking around the world you inhabit going what you know because when i was a little kid i thought that every gun store a la commando had a secret button that had like a, a, a war chest behind the wall right? yeah, yeah. and so to me it's always the world build there i think yeah. when it comes to lead characters it's always some someone who leans into to empathy mm -hmm. and that i would argue that the world may call a certain character an anti-hero but you write him as a hero because he's right. your hero you know yeah. Do you start um, with a character, do you think, most of the time? You no. Know, this one I, I did this week, it was with the idea of a, a, a job that we all know in the real world and shifting as to what it might look like in the underworld, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fun. And, yeah. and, uh, a lot of, and then the character that came into it was an actor I had been talking with, and I was like, I think this is for them, you know? And then you kind of you get there, and then you kind of think, okay, you don't want to repeat yourself, but it's still in the genre mold. So you really have about a dozen to 15 characters to choose from. Which one are you gonna do? And honestly, it's an infinite number of characters when you start you know, taking elements of each and kind of like snowballing. But that's where that came, that came, that one came from. Um, but also like, you know, when you think of even back to, to the first John Wick, we were babysitting, we're well, not babysitting, we were dog sitting my neighbor's new puppy. Oh. And the puppy was a half corgi, half uh, chihuahua. It was a chorgi, which is a miniature corgi, <laughs> black, uh, tricolor, black, brown, white. Right. And, and a um, bunch of Russian guys came in and shot the dog. And you were like, this is the start of a movie. Right. Yeah. And I went after them and, and got murdered right away. You know? Oh, my gosh. Uh, but I, like I said, I always have a pillow on my lap. And the puppy was laying on the pillow. And ironically, the puppy's name in, is in the original script. Uh, it's Moose, M-U-S, oh. which I think Dutch means little. And so it's like Moose Little. And that's, that's where I was like, uh, what would happen if someone murdered my dog? <laughs> that's where that came from. That's yeah. awesome. Isn't that Love funny it. that it's this nugget? What if? It's a question. It's you a question. It with a question, doesn't it? Yeah. What if there was a guy like this? Yeah. What if there was a, uh, what if this happened on a plane? What if, I mean, it's usually that question, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's like, like, you know, again, yeah. you guys have known me for a long time, but like I grew up watching everything, but I loved that, uh, you know, Cloak and Dagger was a great movie and we all loved it as, as a kid because what if your imaginary fr friend was based on the relationship you wish you had with your dad? You know, it was mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, it's, it, you know how a movie is awesome and then at a certain age, and then you watch it later in life, you're like, oh, I missed all of that, like what this movie was really about, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's the magic is what we came from. But when you look at that, it's either, because action scenes are action scenes. I, I, I've never, I've never be, began a, a, a script with that. Um, we all have kind of our backpack and back pocket ideas that we'd like to throw in somewhere. But usually it's, Oh, uh, the, the look, the feel, appeal of a world, it's a character, uh, it's a situation, or it's doing your take on a fill in the blank, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. That, that's then, a lot of times, yeah. When you've got some of those things starting to kind of foment in your mind, um, what's the next step for you? Like, what does that look like? at what point do you express that on a page and what form does that take? Does it not, is it just still verbal? What's the, what's the, as for me, point? if, if I'm going to stack something, um, I, in that, I, I just immediately go to the script, you know, I type in the fade in and I work a hundred percent in the script on that spec. That's just the way I do it. And do you know, like where you're going or are you just letting the story drive it for you? No, there's a reason like, like when you know first drafts no one reads outside of Sonia uh, <laughs> and, and it's hard that, for everyone so. the hardest part too is like 
the genre, like I love genre, man. And genre usually has a short first act or a very long first act. Mm. Um, I want to say that, you know, usually a very short first act is kind of like a horror movie. You know, when you think mm. of it, or Ken, anyway, um, but or you have something like Man on Fire we all love. I think that first act is like an hour 10. It's so you know, long. long. <laughs> it's really long. long. You know, and it's, and it's the best part of the movie. Yeah. So, so when I spec, I just go there. Um, but I do a lot of um, uh, pitching um, uh, in regards to IP or I've got an idea. Um, or when, uh, when, you, when you're when you working with an actor, especially, you don't want to go to a script right away because mm. then um, they don't quite know or the tone of voice or, or that character. Mm-hmm. Right. So what I do is I go direct to scriptment. Well, no, treatment. And treatment to me is um, usually a 12 to uh, 30 page document depending on how into the minutiae you are mm-hmm. and how important it may be to you or the reader um, I would say half half to two thirds of that document is the first act because you know I, I sold Canyon to Alcon and that's with Davis and Stein and there's a section in the middle of the second act where it's like look we know what happens here you know, it's, it's these things. I'm going to do this kind of action sequence and that kind of stuff. I'm not saying I, I'm not going to gloss it over, but it's like, this is the stuff you don't have to pitch. We, we get that, you know, gotcha. and then it's like, now let's go to the third act. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's really kind of doing it in such a way, mm-hmm. um, especially for an actor to then go like, I see the roadmap. Let's go to right. the draft. Right. Um, but it's, it's also like, even talking with you guys about certain projects, it's, do you, do you spec from the pay from uh, in, in final draft? Do you go to the treatment or do you work on the, on the, on the pitch? Yeah. Now, what I would say is you guys are great pitchers, but I no, script suck. <laughs> I can't believe you've gone this far, man. <laughs> Dad, I don't know. Um, but no, I think to me, uh, I can pitch, but it's not my strongest point. I don't really like doing it. It exhausts me. But what I'm good at is going, Hey, uh, here's the here's the treatment. Or if it's television, here's the pilot, and here's a page on episode two, and here's where I think the season's going, and here's where the show could go. Mm-hmm. Now, can I go write it? Now, I will also say I have the earned luxury of I've got some stuff that got made and did okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. When I go in, they're coming into that from the standpoint, the filter of oh, he did he did stuff. People trusted him, and it paid off. You know, so I, I know I'm in a different yeah. place. Sure. But I, I still think that um, the grand irony is we're writers here and we're expected to do the little uh, the little dance, right? Yeah. In the pitch. Yeah. And we've all known people who are awful in pitches because they're just, they're nervous. Uh, I, dude, honestly, the first time I did it for the first year, I had the whole script up in front of me, not on a screen, we weren't zooming then, but... Uh, we you do. Know, we bring our iPads in. Because, yeah, I had to. It's just, but now, like, they're like, in, in, in we, we, it's like the maybe it's the ten thousand hour rule. Now, if you sat me down and just said, "Pitch me a take on this," cool, let's riff because right. you're just mm. on your own skin, and that's the game, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, all right, let's say you've got this idea, you think it's really cool. It is going to be a spec screenplay. Uh, Because that's what we're doing here. And, you know, our process is we tend to do a really deep outline. I think that really has to do a lot with the fact that we're in a partnership. And so it it helps us get on the same page. If you're diving into that first draft and you're just going fade in, bah, um, is there any point during that first draft where you go, oh, fuck, I didn't think about that? And like have to go back and then like change everything on like page five from you know, or do you just go? I'm just gonna get to the end and then hand it off to Sonia and then see what happens. Well, you know, I think every story is different, but honestly, I like simple stories. Those are the ones I watch. Mm-hmm. Even the ones that people are, con- are are convinced are complex, like the usual suspects of the world. He lied. That's the reveal. That's the right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or even uh, going back in, back in time and watching Total Recall as a kid and, and negotiating or just debating, was it in his head or did it really happen? And then you're an adult, you see the movie, you're like, it's all in his fucking head. Like, I mean, it's right there, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
But I think, I think for me, um, the best movies are kind of like the old NES video games, right? Mm -hmm. You're going, you're going from one boss level to the next and pausing to buy something from a weird wizard somewhere, you know, to, to, to enhance your sword or what have you. Mm -hmm. And once you get all those elements in play, I love having heart and love having humor, but you know, as you guys can attest that, you know, especially in the buyerscape, you, t you send them a script. If it's 88 to 94 pages, they're going to read it. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's 140, I don't care who you are that they, they know something's wrong yeah. unless you're like, okay, look, there's a lot of history in there. It's an epic, blah, blah, blah. No. You know? Um, and I think to me, my first draft tend to be long because of two reasons. I use a lot of ellipses um, because it helps me think mm -hmm. and it gives me mar like margins in there to, uh, for Sonya to write. I use a lot of cut twos and fade twos and POVs and stuff. That's for her and me. And mm -hmm. it's actually, the reps as well because if you think of having those gaps it becomes kind of like this uh a pacing thing mm -hmm. uh, when we get to the final draft all of, most all of that gets out unless you you really want it because i don't want to tell the director what to do right um and i, I rarely use like pan and tilt unless yeah. it's yeah. really important you know yeah um but i think i think to me i like i like getting the first draft out but i spend most of my time on the first act because that's what gives, you know, that's what gives you. But I'll also probably admit your favorite scenes in any movie tend to take place in the second act. Mm -hmm. And I want to say it's, it's, it's either a, it's a magical mystery tour as to what works and what doesn't, you know? Mm. Yeah. One of the things I think we really learned, we read, we read a draft of John Wick when it was still called Scorn. And we, I think were inspired by the pacing of your action. In fact, we, you know, adopted it as our own um, in The Princess. You know, we were like, we want this to read as fast paced as possible. And what I think yeah. what, what we always like so much about your writing, if you'll let me praise you for a moment, is that <laughs> it just feels like you're watching a movie. Right. I think that's what's so great about it. It's gonna go, oh, I'm, and it, and it, but not only in the, in the way that it's described, but actually in your use of, ellipses and white space and it's almost like and i love this it's not a criticism but like you don't write in like full sentences like they kind of merge on into the next bit and then he does this and then this happens and then this and you were kind of like you like you had to keep reading this thing and you were in this sequence just like that just like john wick in that moment and had to keep going because it was that <laughs> you know me, that was that's that a lot of that isn't from screenwriting or movies. It was from reading books from like Alistair McLean and Dash yeah. Hammond. And then in the eighties with Tom Clancy, when he would really go into the action and write prose. Like, I, I think that's important. And in fact, some of the greatest backhanded, what would you call it, backhanded compliment I've ever I've received is a studio had, uh, you know, turning a script back in going, that's pretty good to his assistant. And, in, and, and he, he had, had x through all of the action and he had written on the script, I got it, uh, something like punching and kicking. And his assistant said, dude, read it. And he came back, he's like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, you know, and, and so I, I think that's the other thing too, is the greatest joy I have is not everything you write in the script makes it to screen, not especially in the action space, but when you see one little thing even if it's just one in the sequence, you're like, oh, there it is. Because for the most part, it primes the pump for the second unit. It's it, yeah. all the stunt guys. All, and and the, I love those guys. Dude. They feed me as much as I feed them, if not more so. It's the hairpin in the opening scene of The Princess. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's that, oh, yeah, I love that moment. <laughs> um, so how many drafts would you say you do – before you give it to, let's say, your reps or before well, you, you know. I, I'll go, you know, since we all know these people, I'll just yes. go by their their uh, their positions. But like nice. uh, first is Sonia and I until mm -hmm. we get to the place where, you know, um, she's like, yeah. Uh, second is Josh Adler, who's my manager. Right. Thing. Um, right. Once we get yep. him done, I loop in uh, the rest of my APA team, uh, which is Cheryl, Debbie, Kyle and Lucy. And then um, they luckily all compile and aggregate their notes. And by the, they also know by the time it gets to them, mm -hmm. it's been through two pretty fierce gatekeepers. Right. 
Um, and yet each of each of those people bring in uh, that perspective shift. Uh, and again, you don't have to address every note. I mean, yeah. I always like I'm pretty good with grammar. These guys are fucking amazing. So they'll, they'll catch they'll catch things where I'm like this last this last thing was like, is it embedded or embedded? I am or EM? And I'm like, oh, it's yeah. EM. No, there was a That's difference. Like, I just <laughs> no idea, you know. I was just typing, you know, that word, you know. Um, but then the other thing too is you for lack of a better turn of phrase, when you turn a script, you kind of want to have a couple of hanging chads in there, not as like um not not as traps, but right. as as places to go like, look, there is a divergent path in this scene or these characters and this action and this heartbeat that I'm gonna leave in there as divergent. So that when you're talking to producer, studio, buyer, we know that's what we're talking about. And we can come to which, if we go left or right together. Um, I, I, you know. How do you do that though? I mean, that's yeah. like, I, that's really interesting, but I can't. Well, you... like in, in this last draft, uh, there was this notion of what happens if an innocent is killed. And it's this, it's a sci-fi movie. And it's, it was also a question. And I never really gave it much thought because I, I didn't think it was happening. But then you kind of looked at it as like, do you remember that Fast and Furious where they stole this this safe? Yeah, and dragging it down. Actually, the- my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. Know, and you're like, I think thousands of people die. I, I everyone getting coffee is gone. I mean, they're very- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Fast and Furious, right? Uh, it's one of those things that like, I'm not going to, I, you know, I, and, and and I always talk to the person giving the note going. Dude, good note. I'm not going to address it, but I, I've written it down so that if it comes up, that's something we can we can chat about. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, it's the kind of thing that you want um, a director, an actor, or someone else to to kind of uh, to to lean into because their answer I think is going to be better than mine. You know, I'm so far mm-hmm. into the woods. Sometimes I'm not seeing the trees. Mm-hmm. Totally. So it's almost like purposefully having a beat where you know it could. Im- it could bring a note, but that you want someone to give a note because it bring it like makes them more invested or it makes yeah. it, it like, them I, I don't know the answer. Yeah. I have some right. options. And yet, look, I, I, I don't think that uh, we talk about this a lot, but the, I don't think a, a script is biblical or canonical, especially yeah. when you're trying to get cool shit made with cool people. You got to right. be malleable, you gotta be flexible. Right. There's something mm-hmm. in there that can be flexible. And to said marketplace, to said talent pool, to said just yeah. getting paid. Um, right. I don't want to go too too far as it's my way or the highway. All right. you know? totally. Also, the other thing you could do is at the end of each scene, you go, if you want John Wick to kill the man, turn to page 54. If you want him to uh, kiss the man, uh, turn to page 73. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. My- <laughs> Dude, I've seen, by the what was the, uh, uh, was it Bandersnatch? Was yeah. Bandersnatch? We were just yeah. talking about Dude, it the other day. I've seen that script. Like, uh-huh. man, those guys are geniuses are insane. I know, right? It's one wow. or the other. It's one or the other. Right. Uh, I guess my question for you is, and of course, you know, uh, after all that stuff is done and you get notes, what's your approach to notes? You know, the first thing is just making sure that you're getting all the notes at once, that there's yep. an education occurring. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times... Um, if that doesn't happen, you're going to get, you know, two different notes on one topic, mm-hmm. or one section, and you're going to think to yourself, okay, who am I listening to? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't want to listen to the better idea because the more powerful person has the lesser idea, right? Right. But <laughs> that hasn't happened in a long time because we're, we're I just, we, I just try to get everyone on the same page together. And a lot of that is through Adler and team at APA. I'm going, let's get it all in one place. And let's 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 have a clear roadmap moving forward. Right. Um, right. I would say that outside of um, going through all the various gatekeepers, um, there had you know in the past you know five six years, I haven't really faced like a well, uh, let's blow it all up. Uh, actually, a couple of projects, but <laughs> I I mean. Well- myself in the ass there but i'm saying most of them uh by the time we get there it's like yeah i see it all you know okay and well God, one you're lucky. you guys have faced i'm sure but if i have a scene that i like but i don't quite think is working in the screenplay but i'm like eh, maybe it'll pass it never passes so right she knows she's like look i like this too but it's the pacing the tones off it's it to just 
just have them do this or just remove the scene and right. get it home, you know? She's a good editor in that way. You've got right. that person. But what if, all right, I know you're saying it's not, it doesn't happen often, but have you ever been on that Zoom now or in that notes meeting where the most important person in the room gives you a note and you're like, that's terrible. And um, that's going to ruin everything. You know, I think it's always you take a breath when you hear something like that mm -hmm. and just let them keep going. You don't want to interject with positive or negative because I would argue a hundred percent of the time, it's not what's first said in the note. It's what comes after it where you realize, Oh, that's, what's important to them. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're human. We lead, we lead initially with how we address that thing they want. And mm -hmm. if you just let them talk and listen through, you realize why they want that thing. And then you're like, Oh, there's the why let's focus on the why. Mm -hmm. And ultimately by focusing on the why their idea might not seem so bad because now you understand the why and you can actually tilt it that three percent. But a lot of times, like I'm not going to be that guy on any Zoom saying well, that's fucking terrible or that's <laughs> genius. You just need to talk it through and you know, uh, right? And and just kind of see why why they said that in the first place. Yeah. And once you understand why, you're like, cool. That's something we can work with. I think it's really interesting because. The phrase you hear a lot is, what's the note behind the note? But I actually prefer the way you phrase it, which is why. Mm. Why, why, do you, why do you want that moment to happen there? Oh, well, because I think we need an emotional moment or whatever it is. And I, mean, I like you're what you're saying it. about, I, I like what you're saying about the follow-up of the why, Jake, which is um, that not only is it, oh, the why, but if you know the why, then actually most of the time you can figure out how they got to their idea and try and make that idea work for them because yeah. you understand what they're trying to do totally. with the idea. Yeah. That's a really interesting way to approach it. And there was something that Josh, our joint manager, talked about that I think me and Ben really heard recently, which is, and I've heard you say this on calls, and you'll laugh because you'll feel seen, which is, what I like about that idea is... <laughs> <laughs> But it's so true yeah, because yeah. you go, I hear you. Mm. There is something in that. I perceive the why. Maybe it's not the that version that you're pitching, Mr. Producer, Mr. Executive, even Mr. Actor, maybe Mrs. Wife, you know, but what I like there is this. this though, is like when people say that or in, is, is this is like, you know, let's look at a, a, at a, at a sequence of events in a screenplay as a pizza, right? Usually that no hundred percent that note, is one slice of the pizza, right? Mm -hmm. so like you can say like, ah, fuck the, the whole pizza shit, but like it's one slice. And so right. to me, it's going deeper into why is that note? And ultimately, if you go to the why to, no, 100%, you go to the why together, it isn't that that initial idea was bad. It's like that was the knee jerk reaction to that, you know, at its core. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What I would also say is the two things that when certain questions come up, you either just have a character answer before it's asked, you know, um, it's the classic gremlins of it all, where it's like, you know, uh, hey, they hate sunlight. Uh, don't get them wet and uh, don't feed them after midnight. That if you were uh, a, a, a father of a child getting that that pet, you'd be like, no fucking thank you. That yeah. makes no sense at all. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, just, just something, you know. Right, right. But I think, too, the other one is um, if it isn't working, uh, take it out. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you take it out. Um, you will either, if there's no connection tissue, no connective tissue needed, great. And if it is needed, you'll figure it out. You know, mm. uh, we've all, we talked through this, even on the princess, yeah. there were scenes that we were desperately trying to make work that ultimately were like, guys, cut it out together. The three of us now let's see what it looks like. And once that little fucker was gone, we're like, Oh, thank God. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and again, yeah. the better idea came into the, the vacuum created. It is, doesn't always work that way, but a lot of times, if you're in this together, the classic, you know, I say all the time, Iron Sharp Desire, best idea wins. It comes into fray, man. Mm. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's totally cool. I'm going to ask you one last question because I know we told you it would only be 30 minutes, so um, I'm not going to hold you to anything longer. But something that someone asked us recently was, what do you do when you 
don't know what you don't know where to go. You, whether you call it writer's block or whether you call it like I'm, I'm just stuck in a place. And when do you know like when to put the script down or when to keep pushing through? How long do you keep trudging through that endless swamp? You know, I, I think it's funny because. I think when you become like where you where we are as professional writers, this is paying the bills. Fucking cool is that, right? Yeah, right. Um, that happens to us in the rewrite. That happens to us in the polish because it's like taking a class that you hated in high school. You mm -hmm. just don't want to open the goddamn file because you just don't have it in you. That that to me is the hardest thing. And that's the thing I'm still trying to figure out how to do. You know, ultimately you just have to put a gun to your own head and say, do the work, right? Just do right. the work. Now I think from inception phase. Um, the first thing you have to realize is it's not a failure on your part. If you wrote 20, 40, 60 pages in and didn't know where to go, you wrote fucking 20, 40, and 60 pages in. Yeah, Every cool. page you and I write, we get better at what we do. So mm -hmm. don't think that that was a failure on your part that you couldn't tell that story because by doing the pages, you sharpened um, your sword to get on to the next thing, and that might be the one that gets out. Um, I've never gone back to any of the orphans I've got. I, I always call like I, I call the, the screenplays that I finish orphans. I call um, the the you know how you you've got a scene in a movie that a screenplay that you love, but uh, you're like it's not working, so you cut it and you put it in the. I, well, I've always put it at the bottom of the file. I've never gone back to them. I've got thousands of those orphans somewhere on way too many files, right? But you like I would never look at it as failure. You got to that page just because you didn't finish that doesn't mean you didn't fuck up. You started it, you got there, you recognize that you don't want to go. And then what you do is you sit down and you write fade in and you try it again. And again, like to me, I know a lot of writers who don't like writing. Uh, and I think ultimately that is not the gate. You get to the point of attrition where it does get tough, you know, mm -hmm. but ultimately even here, the joy is that blank page where no one's harping in your ear. No one's looking over your shoulder. You're all alone either listening to music or I just listen to a, 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 what do you call it? An air purifier in the corner that just gives me this drum. Some white noise. White yeah. noise. And you're alone and you're with your best friend in your head saying, let's go here. So mm. I, I think, I think I've answered that, but like, I, I never want anyone to think that that's a failure. Dude. Yeah. Right. I really, I re I really like that. I really respond to that. And I've never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. I've always thought about it as I was trying to do this thing. And I yeah. and I got stuck and yeah. I failed rather than and I am a and I say this a lot that there is value in everything and I've never really fully seen up until this moment the value in giving up on a screenplay or giving up on a project other than you know what you were doing with this you were sharpening a sword. Well, and on top of it too, when you think of it too, when you look at those screenplays, right, you get to page forty, you have a plot, you got a character. Uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, and you get a world. Um, ultimately, there's something in there that if you love an element of it or think that there's something there, you rip it out. You mm. surgically remove it and go play with it elsewhere. I mean, mm. I, I've never read the old, uh, you know, initial uh, drafts of Star Wars, but I'm under the impression, like, seeing some of the um, artwork, you're like, yeah. who's that dude? Yeah. Right? That's right. Luke Starkiller. I don't know who that yes. is. Yes. Like, yes. What was it? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, like I, I can't remember. Again, you might know it better, but like Han Solo and Chewbacca were like, at one of the drafts were one character or like that right. kind of thing. Mm. And they were like, oh, let's make it two. Like, that's, I think, what happened is he saw something there, but recognized it as, you know, would make it better is this. I mean, right. even like the, the Coen brothers, I can't remember what movie it was, but they, they were writing a movie. And then I think it was Miller's Crossing and they had writer's blocks. So they wrote Barton Fink, which was about writer's block. And then huh. went back to Miller's Crossing, something like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, and by the way, that, uh, I mean, it's still a genius movie that I don't have any idea what it's about. But, it's, <laughs> but I, I think too, is again, the takeaway from that question is every page you write mm -hmm. is a success, man. I yeah, like that. I hear I like that. that a lot. Yeah, we have definitely have had moments where we haven't finished. You know, we've gotten 60, sometimes even 70 pages in. And we just don't know how to 
we can't get yeah, through get the, the we're going it's it's not working we don't know exactly why it's not working there's an ending that we thought was going to work but it doesn't work anymore and after like you know hitting our heads against the wall for hours we just go we got to put it down right and, and it's hard to not look at that as a failure um but i love that you're absolutely right not only is that sharpening the sword but then the all of those ideas now live in your brain yeah and yeah. without even necessarily reading them again they come out like the good ones stay the bad ones just mm -hmm. kind of like go away but the good ones that you did come up with in those pages they sit there yeah. and then they might come out through even subconsciously in yeah. in future work but that's also part of the reason that even when we work on the princess or a couple of the other things we're working on now moving forward mm -hmm. you find yourself copying scenes from bad movies but it was a great scene yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. it, you know, or it's or it's or it's a weird like it's just like you know kind of like the scene in there right yeah, Ooh, yeah you know and that to me is elementary and it's just the, mm. where we can geek out on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Well, we should let you go because you, we know you've got writing to do. Dude, on all of the 943 projects that you currently have in development. I know, really. Nice. Uh, you know, I'm just going to start. I'm going to take my own advice and just stop writing all of them and start over. <laughs> start over. <laughs> Throw them all away. Start Dude, over. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Nothing thanks so much, Derek. It was awesome. awesome. And um, yeah, thanks for being on. And we'll. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking very soon. Yeah. Actually, give me a shout out. We will. We will. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Bye, nice Derek. Thank, thank you. Bye, bye. He's such a dude. I love he Derek. Is. I love Derek. He's Cole just, you know.